Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Morgan Douglas who wanted to see how to have a timed game over screen. So basically, we'll have a game over screen with a timer ticking down. If it reaches zero, it's going to take us back to the title screen. However, if you do click continue, it's going to take us back to the beginning of the level and it's going to reset our lives, give us five to start or something like that. Something you see in Mario. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so instead of reinventing the complete wheel, I'm going to download my lives and game over system sample project. And then that's what we're going to be using for the template of this project. So just to real quickly show what this looks like here, we basically have a new game here. We'll go like this. We have a save point and then we are going to get hit. And then if we die a couple more times here, we can just fall off to make this quicker. And we'll just show off what the game over currently does. So you can see that we're just we're reloading. But when we die, we go to a continue or return to title. We click continue. Right now, we just reload at the checkpoint. So we just have a few things to change here. We, first off, we want a timer. The timer is going to send us back to the title screen no matter what. And we also want to change some other stuff. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into objects here. And we're going to find the game over input. Now, I'm going to try not to explain everything going on because I do have a video going over this exact project. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make another action here. And this is going to be uh, called uh, start timer. And it's going to be our new default action. And it's just going to unconditionally go here. And we're going to just start a timer. So timer function. And we might want it. Let's see here. Let's make a variable. Call it timer. And we're going to set the default value to 10. And the cool thing is, is it will always just pop up as 10 just from setting that. So now we can go to timer. And object self timer. We want it to count down. And we want it to count down. From its self value and it will always be 10 we won't have to worry about that then we also want to show a a text because we do want to show the timer we'll do the timer the font we'll just pick one here and it's 10 so we need two digits at least um, we can add the zeros ah, we, we can take away the zeros uh, hide the decimals though and we don't need one this big but it's not the end of the world so i'll just leave it here and I want this to be centered so it's easier to position. I'll use the screen as the base. I believe that half of the screen size is 156. And then we'll just go, oh, we'll go 40. So I'm putting it in the middle and 40 pixels down from the top. And that should work. Yeah, so I keep it, I keep the this unchecked so that it's showing the whole time. And so if we go to lives here, and we put our lives down to, let's say, zero. And test this out. We should see that we have a timer. So we're going to go like this. And jump and die. And it's going to take us to the game over screen. And you can see our little timer up here at the top. So I'm not going to make this look pretty, obviously. I'm just showing how to make it work. So you can see the timer. We got it. The one thing I will do is make the text different. So let's change the font. I think I was just using this, I guess. And you can click preview too and see what it looks like. Okay, that's way too little. So let's try font four. Okay, yeah, that's better. That's more consistent with the font I'm using. So that's what we'll do. And hit okay, make sure you hit okay on that. And so now the the other thing that we do is we need to just have where if it reaches zero, then it goes to load. So you could have this multiple ways. You could have a common action doing this, or you could just simply say uh, this one. Well, for instance, we're we're changing this up, right? So we just have a continue option now. So I'll just change this up here. So we'll say continue. And we will delete this. And we'll go like this. And we'll add a link right here. And this is going to happen. If this timer is less than or equal to, it has to be less than or equal to because the timer actually stops at zero. If you just leave less than, it will never equal. It will never ring true. But but if you have it less than or equal to, it will. So click OK on this. And so now we could test this out here. All right, so we save this. And then we go right here, die. 
and we'll watch our timer count down. And when it reaches zero, it will take us back to the title screen. And there we go. All right, so that's the first problem that was solved, basically adding the timer. So now what we need to do is we need to add where you start at the beginning of the level. Now that, that's a little more tricky. So let's start with that. All right, for this next part, we need to set up saving. We need to differentiate the saving. We need to have a save for when the start level happens, and we need to have a save for when the checkpoint happens. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go first to the save point. We wanna set the checkpoint or this, yeah, save point, checkpoint up to differentiate that it's a checkpoint. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change this variable file slot system. We're gonna change it to 99. And this is going to basically say that this is a checkpoint. So file slot 99 is a checkpoint and we wanna make sure that we're resetting this. So when we're done here, we're going to change this live or this uh, file slot to zero. And so that way, this is a self-maintaining system, changes it to 99 and then it changes it back when it's done. Now, this is not setting up for multiple file slots. This is just saying that file slot zero is going to be our only file slot. All right, so just for the purposes of this video. All right, so now let's work on the, the starting level. And what I like to do now is I like to add another scene and this will be called the save before scene one or level one or however, you know, level one might be a better one. And we're just gonna leave it all blank here and we're just gonna leave it all blank or, or the color of your fade out. So if you were fading out white, you'd wanna change it to white, you know, however that works. Now this is gonna be above this uh, scene one here. Now, scene one, the, all of these scenes are a part of level one. So this would only be happening for this level. So before each level is where you would want one of these. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new object here. We're gonna call it system autosave. And we're just gonna get rid of all these. And so here's where it's gonna get a little bit interesting is we need to have a way to specify whether this is a normal load in or a load in from a game over screen. So you, you don't have any more lives basically. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a switch here. And we're gonna name this switch normal load or normal autosave or something. Okay, this just means that you are progressing from the level like normal, you haven't died yet, kind of a thing. So normal autosave. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say check if normal. So this one will be, it's a normal autosave. And this one will be, this is a, a game over reset. And mainly it's just to add lives. So we're gonna go like this. And of course, if this normal auto switch is on, then it's gonna go here. And if it's off, or you could do else, but in this case, if it's off, then we're gonna go to here. And now here's where we're going to turn this on or off. It's gonna be done in the transitions. But first, let's get this object on here before I forget. That happens quite a bit. All right, so that object's in there. So now we're gonna go to the transitions. And so as of right now, we go straight from the title screen to the start of that level one there. Well, now we're gonna be doing something different. We're gonna be going to this uh, save before level one. So we'll add this right here. And I'm gonna set this up. Uh, we do want the fade out, but we don't need the fade in. So I'm gonna remove this and put this to zero. And it's basically because it's a black screen anyway, we don't need the fade in, we just want it to go right to the logic. But what we do want is we want to change the switch and we want to change the switch of the autosave to be a normal start. So this is how we're going to differentiate. Now, for some reason, I mean, we have one in there, but if for some reason you don't know which one's the single, you could just click all, but we just have one, so it should be good. So basically, the autosave system is gonna turn on on a normal transfer. And then we're gonna copy this and put it right here. Now, 
on once we do save, we want it to go to the start of level one. And we don't need to worry about the switch anymore. One, because it's not, that object's not in there. But now we do need to fade out from it. So we're going to go black, 0.3. But we don't need to fade out from this scene because it's already black. So we're going to remove this one. And we do want it to be the previous scene ends. So you can tell from the, the, from the flow here, we go from the title. When we click new game, in this case, th it would also be the same if you beat level one and then you're going to level two. You would fade out from wherever you're going. Then you would go to an autosave, just a brief autosave blank screen, almost like a loading screen. No one would even know that this is happening. And then you're going to fade out into the next level. And it's relatively quick because we're not going to take a lot of time saving. So no one will even notice that you're doing this. But the reason I like to save in this kind of a scene, one, you can differentiate things like this, where you can use the, the switch to say whether it is a normal scene or not. And two, it can save from headaches from, from auto loading at the beginning of a level where some logic runs instantly, or sometimes there's background music issues where the background music won't play when you load. And it's because of the way, how you started the music in that level. And so sometimes you'll have some audio issues. So if you save in a blank em empty scene like this, you start in a fresh new scene every time you load and it just makes it really nice. That's why I like to do it this way now. And so if we continue, now we need to go back to the object here. We can save, we can then wait, because you always want to wait at least 0 0.05. I like to do 0 0.1 to be super safe. And then we're going to end the scene. All right. So this game over reset, it's basically the same. So I'm going to copy this right here. We don't necessarily need to save because we've already saved it, but we do need to do some things that we want. So for instance, we want more, we want the characters start with at least five lives. So what we're gonna do is go to common lives and we're going to add it five, all right? So I'll put this up like this. Okay, so we're gonna, Oh yeah, we can remove the save because we already know that it's saved. And, and technically, technically you would want to save it again, my bad. So you would want to save it again and then leave. This way you're saving it with five lives. So yeah, that makes sense. And then the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the autosave does not keep on game save. So we don't want this to, to keep on game save at all. We also want to make sure that this is not maintained state, which it's not. So that's good. So with this setup, it, it, uh, let's see here again. It, it changes the lives back to five. It waits a little bit. It saves the game again. Then it waits a little bit, and then it goes to end scene. All right. And that should work because we're, this is only ever going to happen if we have a game over. So partway through this, I'm realizing that there's actually an issue with our logic. The, the issue is this. The safe is saving right here. And so what's happening is, is that this game over screen will never actually run because we're starting the state right here when we load. And so the way that I have this set up right now will actually never save the game or it, sorry, it will never reset the lives to five. And so what we need to do instead is we need to add another weight to the top of this save file. And this gives us a little flip second where we can actually di differentiate whether this is a save or a reload. And what we need to do is take this and put the link right there. And so what it's going to be is we can actually just remove this and put unconditionally. So unconditionally, it's going to come down here to normal and it's going to wait 0.1. If it waits 0.1 and this trigger doesn't ring true, then that means that this is a normal save and it's going to continue down the logic tree. However, if during this brief wait, this is actually true, normal autosave is off, then it's going to know that this is a game over reset and it's going to uh, provide the lives and stuff like this. So now let's test this out. And we're going to go to a new game here. You can see we briefly went to that pause. And remember, we started our lives with zero. 
So we hit this checkpoint, which is the 99, and then we're going to jump and die. And so now we have this game over timer counting down. I'm gonna hit continue by pressing space. And you can see that it's gonna load us up in this level. And now we have at the start of this level, and now we have our five lives or whatever starting lives would be after a game over. And so you can see this is just a, a nice simple way to do this. So there is one last thing to go over and that is in the player object when we're dead and when we reload, we actually need to reload to the correct file slot. And so since we're dead here and we know that we're gonna reload to the checkpoint, we know that the file load slot needs to be, so the file slot needs to be 99 because those are our checkpoint spots. So we're gonna put that right here. So we change it to file slot 99 and then we go like this. So now we're gonna play test. You can see that I have one life now. And so we're gonna go like this, we're gonna save, and then we're gonna die and it's gonna to reload to the checkpoint. And then we're gonna have zero lives now. When we die, we're gonna to load to continue or to the uh, game over, but continue. Now we're on the first screen with full or the uh, reset lives. I hope this helped at least understand how you would implement something like this. Uh, any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, we'll get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.